Hi friends, this is Carmen. Welcome back. And if it's your first time here, welcome. My channel is all about succulents and cacti in my balcony garden and lots of houseplants in my apartment. It's the end of the month and it's time for me to share with you some plants that I really, really admire this month and that have brought me a lot of joy. And I'm doing a little bit different theme on it this month. It's not so much the biggest and the best and all of that. I'm going to be doing plants that were I thought I was gonna lose and came back and now we're doing great and uh, I just want to share those with you because I think they need a little bit of spotlight so stay tuned and we'll get to it so as many of you know I do have um, in my plant room here a little ICU unit uh, where I bring plants that are not doing so well that need a little bit of love and care and just a little bit more attention and closer eye on. But sometimes I don't always show you after they get out of ICU and after they're out and about in the rest of the plants and how they're doing. So that's what I'm gonna do today. I'm gonna share with you some plants, five of them specifically, that are doing well after being on the brink and one plant that I'm, I need your help with that I'm moved around. I've had her in ICU, brought her out, moved to different places and I can't quite figure out what she wants. So I need your help on that one. So let's start off with, how about this Hoya here? This is the Hoya Compacta, Hoya Carnosa Compacta Hindu Rope. And this one, you may remember my mentioning to you, there were four different cuttings in here, rooted cuttings that initially were doing well. And then I noticed two of them were constantly wrinkled. And with the Hoya uh, Compacta, when the leaves are pretty much any Hoya, when they wrinkle, when they get have a wrinkly look to them, that means they need water. Well, two of them were looking nice and firm and healthy because I was watering it on a, on a, you know, adequate schedule. But the other two, no matter how many times I watered it, always looked wrinkly. So I took those two out to check them out. And um, I decided to take off all the soil from the roots and put them in some water therapy. Basically just put the roots inside of a uh, little jar um, kind of like if you were propagating it, but just to give the roots some time to um, maybe grow some new roots and so I can keep a better eye on them if it really was getting root rot. One of the um, cuttings did die. It did have root rot and it did die. The other one, little by little, now I forget which one it was. I think it was this one. Um, little by little from the tip to the back it started to lose its wrinkliness and the roots started to grow new roots so I actually had it here um, I would say a good month four weeks before I decided to put it back in here and um, it seems I've had it in here now well not too long maybe about four or five days and it's doing really well so far but that just shows you friends that with cuttings especially plants nowadays they come separate cuttings in a pot that if you are having trouble with one part of the plant more than likely that's just one cutting that you can take out either get rid of it it's too far gone or um try to save that one and in this case i took two out one survived and i put it back it's still nice full little five inch pot and i think it's going to do well this hoya hindu rope now another example of that is my peperomia obtusifolia variegated i got this one from the plant stand uh, about six months ago and I loved it for its variegation, I still do. Again, there were three plants in there. One of them, this one in particular, was not doing well. It was getting uh, really floppy while the other ones were doing fine. And it started to get brown tips. So I took this one out and left this one in my east facing bedroom window so it can continue growing and doing well and put this one in its own little pot 
some fresh soil, some fresh nutrients and put it under a grow light here in my ICU. And sure enough, hope you can see there, the uh, new growth coming through on the top there. So this week I will be reuniting them and putting this one back because I think it is healthy enough. It's showing me that it's over whatever little temper tantrum it was having and it's having new growth and it can go back in here. I'll keep an eye on it and see if perhaps that light in the bedroom isn't enough because you know we're going into winter now. The sun is shifting a little bit further south and the way that the sun comes in my east facing windows is at a different angle now. So I've, I've noticed that and I'm thinking that some of the plants may not be as happy as they used to be. So I have to keep an eye on that. But this Peperonia obtusifolia variegated is one plant that came back and now is healthy and can be reunited. <laughs> Now, speaking of sun, you know, lots of people think that succulents and cacti can get sun and they'll be just fine. Um, but there are some succulents in particular that can be very sensitive to sun and can get burned by the sun, can get bleached out by the sun if they get too much direct sun. And this Gasteria little warty was one of them. I had this one on my patio and um you can see it's got lots of pups on there i have it in this little pot here and it was getting too much even more early morning sun where it was coming through and before it moved over the building um was hitting these plants on that uh, shelf and it still has some of the damage you can see here well where it was bleached out almost burned well, almost the entire plant looked like that. And these Gasteria little warties are susceptible to that. So I brought it inside. This is one of the best succulents to have inside your home, friends. Um, because, well, I don't want to make a separate video out of this, but they're slow growers. They don't want direct sunlight they just want bright light and that's what I gave it I put it here in the plant room not even under a grow light because I figured that wouldn't make it even worse but I put it on my back shelf here where we'd get just ambient light room light basically and little by little the coloring started to come back not completely back because that area right there still needs to recover but it's been in here probably three, four months recovering. And even the new pups have gotten bigger. The new pups have a great coloring to them. And I could even propagate those if I wanted to. But this is a plant that I thought I was gonna lose because it was just so bleak. You know, the coloring on it was like, this is a goner. But when I took it out of the pot and I looked at the roots, the roots were still good. I just realized it was getting way too much sun. So I gave it some sun relief and just some ambient light in here in the plant room and it made a complete recovery. That's Gasteria little warty. Wonderful, wonderful succulent to have indoors. Okay. Now, another one that had some sun damage, not because it was outside, but because it was in a window. This is my Neon Pothos and she's doing brilliantly now but you can see here that not too long ago when this one was in my bedroom window in the summertime when the sun was in a different location the sun was coming straight through and this guy even though i tried to move the blinds angle them was getting too much direct sun so it got burned in some areas. You can see some of the damage still there. So I brought her in here to the plant room and I put her up at the top here of my shelf and it, just to get some ambient light, give her a relief from the sun. And little by little, I took off some of the more really damaged leaves and little by little, she's been growing new leaves, coming in healthy 
and really starting to trail and doing, <clears throat> excuse me, so, so much better. Um, I, I'm just loving this brilliant color that it's got back now and really a neon color because even it was almost even bleached out too is like a dull yellow almost. Um, but this one did a wonderful recovery of sun burn, sun stress, this neon pothos. And I'm going to let it trail because I really like the look of it trailing down the shelves there. And when I do film, you know, with the shelf behind me, you can just start seeing the tip of it. So I like that look of it. I'm gonna, not going to propagate it or cut it. I'm going to let her grow. And she's done a wonderful recovery, this neon pothos. Okay. So when you start seeing little things like that, friends, these tender plants, make sure you get them out of the sun as quick as possible and um, get them some relief. Okay. Now the last one is probably near and dear to my heart. I really thought I was going to lose this one, but she is doing wonderful now. This is my Monstera leaf cutting. I got this leaf cutting here from my mom, from her main plant that um, she had, believe it or not, outside for a long time. And she chopped it up. I, she gave me a leaf and it started to, um, it started in soil, wasn't propagating. I took it out, put it in water, finally it rooted and I put it in this nice chunky uh, aeroid mix and placed her here um, right near the humidifier and just really kept a close eye on her and then sure enough she gave me this baby last month slits aren't the biggest no but after thinking I may lose her I was happy and then this month look what she did she gave me this baby. So she is doing wonderful from a cutting that I thought I was going to lose to now growing so big and strong with two new leaves. I think I have to put a little pole in here because she's, she's a little heavy on this side. Um, but she's doing wonderful. I'm just so, so happy with the recovery that she's made. And, um, you know, if it wasn't for it being for my mom, I probably wouldn't have, you know, worked so hard to save her. Um, because I think when you get plants or cuttings from special people, um, you just want to, you know, work even harder. And that plant was really, really old. It was like 30 years old from when they first moved here. And I really wanted to save a part of that plant. And now it is saved. And now that plant will live on. So I'm really happy with that. Okay. So let me show you um, the one I'm having trouble with now. Okay. Some of you may remember this plant that it used to sit right here and I had gotten quite a bit of compliments on how full and lovely it was. And it was, it was full and lush and beautiful and it was doing fine for the first six months that I had it. And then about three months ago or so it started, um, getting browning and yellowing leaves. Okay. All right take them off and it started getting more and more till finally I'm like, what is wrong with you? My Syngonium white butterfly is down to this friends. I don't know what to do with her. I've inspected her for pests, but look at all this browning that she's getting or has. And I've, she's, the strange thing about it is that she's getting lots of new growth still. Look at that. But then look what happens. A lot of the new growth gets brown and dies off. Not too many of them make it. And I am at the point where I, I, I just want to cut her down to the bottom. I don't know. What do you think, friends? I've changed the soil. I've repotted her. The roots looked good. It's not root rot. She is, was in this east facing window, but she was not in direct light. 
if I p placed her under the uh, lamp, she seemed to get worse. So that was not good. So I have her down below over here in some ambient light. And I really want to save her, you know. And I'm thinking, I don't know, maybe I should chop it down because I just noticed way down here at the bottom, you see that down there? It's getting new growth down there. So maybe she does need a, a hard cut back and, you know, tell her to stop her fussing. Um, so let me know down in the comments below, friends, what you think is wrong with her. Um, I, like I said, I've inspected her. I've treated her with insecticidal soap at least three times I've treated her and um, I cannot find any pests on her. The soil is fresh. She's getting new growth. Is it just that, you know, do they normally do this? <laughs> this is, I only have three Syngoniums. This was the first one I got. And I thought, oh yes, you know, it's lasted me six months. She's gonna do wonderful, but you know, now she's doing this. So I'm not quite sure what's wrong with her. So if you can leave me some suggestions or advice down below, I would oh so appreciate it. <laughs> and we'll see how she does. I'm not giving up on her because I, I truly believe she still has potential, okay? So those are the plants, friends, that I have saved and brought back. One of them I'm still working on. And I, you know, love doing that. It is really a sense of um, accomplishment that you've saved a plant and brought it back and it's doing even better than before. Um, I think that's kind of a little bit of a, a high, <laughs> you know, that us plant parents get in being able to do that for, for plants. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please, friends, do give it a thumbs up. I appreciate that so, so very much. It helps me out so much. And I appreciate all of you. It's just uh, Thanksgiving weekend right now. And I do want to say to all my American uh, family and friends and subscribers, all of you, um, I want to give you a thank you so much for all the support that you give me and all the wonderful comments that you leave, all the likes, all the shares, all of that. I couldn't be where I am right now and doing what I love without you. And I appreciate you so, so very much. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Having said that, I will see you in the next video before I get all teary eyed. I will see you in the next video. Enjoy your day. Have a blessed day. Bye bye now. <laughs>